I've been watching your heads. You're nodding on all the programs. You've heard it 10 years ago. You've heard it 20 years ago. Why doesn't it change? The Comptroller General of the United States invited all the presidential candidates to come in for a briefing. I went in for a briefing. He said there was only two other people that came in for a briefing. What the briefing he told us is that we have a fiscal gap on the order of $50 trillion. And you're hearing all this money is going to be spent to do all these great things? My God, don't believe a word of it. You know, where do you think NAFTA came from? From the Trinity? It came from a Demo Democratic administration. We are mischaracterizing terrorism. Terrorism has been with civilization from the beginning, and it will be there till the end. What we need to do is to begin to deal with the rest of the world as equals, and we don't do that. We spend more as a nation on defense than all the rest of the world put together. Who are we afraid of? Who are you afraid of, but, Brian? I'm not. And Iraq has never been a threat to us. We invaded them. I mean, it, it is unbelievable. The military industrial complex not only controls our government, lock, stock, and barrel, but they control our culture. Americans should know that we're torturing people. I don't think Americans are for that. And the lady who gave us the information from the CIA was fired. You want marijuana? Why not go to a package store? If you've got a, 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 a fifth, a fifth of gin, it'll do more damage to you, your health, than will a pack of marijuana. Now, with respect to other drugs, legalize the regulation thereof. The addiction problem is a public health problem. It's not a criminal problem. All we do is put people in jail, and then they come out, they become better criminals, and they can better qualify to steal and do crime to feed their habit. And it's with Democrats, with Republicans, they take care of the people. You think it's an accident that all of a sudden we wake up that the wealthy aren't paying a fair share? The only way they're going to pay a fair share is wipe out the income tax. It is corrupt. It's corrupting our society. Is it a surprise to anybody in this room that if you don't have any money, you don't get any justice? Is that a surprise to you all? My gracious. The only way you're going to get justice is to turn around and empower yourselves to become lawmakers so you can change the system. And there's no thought of really changing the system today. It's politics as usual. There's nothing I would do as president to, to lower the price of gasoline right now. We Americans have to grow up. If we want to get off of the dependency in the Middle East, we have to own up to the problem. These things cost money. They're controlling our society. And the sooner we stop fighting these wars, here, stop and think. You only see $3? Just watch those wheels turn. There's another $4, is, which is what we spend to keep American troops around the world to keep the price. So you're paying more than $7 a gallon. You just don't know it. Who is the greatest violator of the non-proliferation treaty? The United States of America. We signed a pledge that we would begin to disarm, and we're not doing it. We're expanding our nukes. Who the hell are we going to nuke? Senator Tell me, Brian. Nation coming out, Senator Durbin, Mr. Strum in his book, that really points out that these people knew that there was two sets of intelligence going on at the same time. And they made a political decision to vote the way they voted. A political decision that cost, stop and think, we have killed more Americans than, than was done on the 11th of September. Osama bin Laden must have been rolling in his blankets Senator. how happy he was over our invading Iraq. Understand that this war was lost the day that George Bush invaded Iraq on a fraudulent basis. You pass a law, not a resolution, a law, making it a felony to stay there. And I'll give you the text of it. And if, you, if you're worried about filibuster, here's what you do tactically. They can pass it in the House. We've got the votes there. In the Senate, let them filibuster it. And let Reed call up every, at 12 o'clock every day to have a cloture vote and let the American people see clearly who's keeping the war going and who's not. And that's just the beginning of the tactic if they're tough enough to do it. Do you want to end it? You're concerned about what's going to happen after we withdraw? Well, remember Vietnam. All the dominoes are going to fall. Southeast Asia is going to go, uh, is going to go communist. Well, how do we know what will happen? I do know this, that the insurgency is successful because the population sustains that insurgency.
Period. If you had two minutes with the President of the United States, what would you say? Drop dead. You're concerned whether or not I'm taking money from the health care industry. God, not that I know of, unless they're sending it in small dribbles. All I ask for people is to give me what they spent at the movies the last time they went to the movies, or what they spent for a latte yesterday.